Hi everyone and welcome at the New School. My name is Karen Kooni. I'm the director of the Viralis Center for Art and Politics and really thrilled to um, have you in this very historic and important space for us for this performance or reading or conversation, I think is what we called it, entitled All Visible Directions Between Sky and Water, um, presented by Natalie Diaz and uh, Maria Hupfield. Um, I would like to say just a few words about the space in which we are. Um, it will take a few minutes, um, but then, of course, um, we all want to hear from Maria and Natalie you know, as quickly as possible. Um, just to acknowledge that spaces are always special. Louder. Louder. Um, they um, harbor different kinds of histories, and for us this uh, space is in particularly important long before the new school was here. Of course, it was the territory that was first occupied by the Lenape Indians. Um, about, what would that be, 60 years ago, the new school was looking for a new space. Um, this, um, there were a couple of brownstones on this block. We took them over, we demolished them, we built a new building designed by an Austrian architect, Joseph <coughs> Urban, in 1930. And in 1931, this space was inaugurated. It was the men's or the uh, cafeteria for the students at the time. And it was um, decorated by Jose Clemente Orozco, a Mexican muralist who had been looking for a way to show his work and his art and his um, political uh, causes in New York City. Alma Reed, as the story so often goes, was a um, philanthropist, a sponsor, a, um, also a journalist. She worked with the president of the new school, Alvin Johnson, and said, you know, you have this new building. I also know you have no money you could invite Jose Clemente Orozco to decorate the student's lounge or um, cafeteria and I will pay for the material and I'll put him up. And the deal was struck. Um, Johnson was thrilled to have a representative of this incredibly important historical uh, movement in New York City at the new school, Clemente. Uh, Jose Clemente Orozco. And um, Orozco was pleased to have an opportunity to show here whatever he wanted. Um, he presented the plan to show revolutionary struggles in the world of that time, and Johnson said, well, given um, that this is basically a gift to the new school, you have free license, you can do as you please, and I am thrilled and grateful. Um, I think he said, well, um, paint me the picture, paint as you must, I assure you freedom. And so the um, scheme in this particular room is that on, the, on this side you have um, struggles from, uh, in the Orient and it is basically the struggle of independence in India as it unfolded in the 1930s. Um, in April of 1930, Gandhi, who is depicted here, um, launched the Salt March and was accompanied there by a Indian uh, poet. Her name is Sarojini Naidu and she's depicted here. And they are facing oppressors and um, enslaved people represented here on, in the center of the panel, first enslaved people on the lower bottom and then uh, the, I guess it's like a few a look into the future of what would happen with the British imperialists up in the center there. Um, the struggle in the o Occident is depicted on this side of the wall. It's also actually facing the West. On the left, you have a depiction of a governor from Yucatan State. Um, his name was Felipe Carrillo Puerto. He fought for women's suffrage, um, for, in the, for the rights of Mayans. He himself was Mayan and was a journalist, a writer, um, labor activist, a union activist and mobilizer, and was the governor of um, uh, Yucatan for two years, from 1922 until 1924, when he was assassinated by um, forces that were royal to the Mexican army. He himself was also part Mayan, and in the mural you have a depiction of um, uh, representatives of uh, Mayan civilization in the Yucatan. To the right of it is the Russian Revolution depicted through Lenin and then Stalin, um, accompanied by various members of different uh, cultures and ethnic communities um, throughout um, the Soviet Union. That particular image 
that little part of it um, with Stalin and Lenin was covered up for three years in the 50s during the McCarthy era, and it was done so in a very strangely domestic way. There was a little curtain, it was yellow, and you, there are some photographs floating around that on request, uh, you know, lovely, wonderful um, administrator in a nice little starched suit would open the curtain or pull the curtain and let you look at this very dangerous um, uh, image for a few minutes. Um, behind it is a more, or on this side, is a more um, metaphorical image of the return of the worker of the new day. And the worker comes back um, and finds a table filled with food and refreshments and um, some books behind um, Philippe at the camera. And there is his wife or partner and the hearth and the children, etc. And behind this screen, which we might be able to see later on is a depiction of uh, universal brotherhood. It's a blank, empty table. On it is only one uh, book open without any text in it. It's a container for a script that hasn't been written yet. And it is surrounded that table by representatives of various different um, ethnic groups and a couple of individuals. Um, we can you know, talk about it uh, more maybe later, but I also just want to um, say a couple of words now about uh, Natalie and Maria. We are really thrilled to be working with both of them. Maria Hopfield has participated in one of our, I think, most significant initiatives over the last couple of years. It was called Indigenous New York, and you and Jason Luan uh, participated in one of those uh, workshops or roundtable discussions. Um, and maybe just a few more words about Maria since I began with you. Brooklyn-based interdisciplinary artist and a member of the Anishinaabe Nation from Wasakin, First Nations in Georgian Bay, Ontario, Canada, but living in Brooklyn at the moment. Um, you are the recipient of a 2018 Mid-Career Award in Visual Arts and um, are also the recipient of the inaugural International Studio and Curatorial Programs Indigenous Artist in Residence um, Initiative, which is supported by the Canada Council for the Arts. Maria's first uh, major traveling exhibition, The One Who Keeps On Giving, opened um, at the power plant uh, last year and is traveling to a number of other institutions and museums. And the next um, one-person exhibition is coming up, uh, opening at the Heard Museum in Arizona in 2019, next December. Um, Maria's work has been presented at um, the exhibition, or in the exhibition Beat Nation, Art, Hip Hop, and Aboriginal Culture, and was also in a number of other group exhibitions at BRIC, um, the Museum of Arts and Design in New York, um, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts and many others. Um, you are, together with Jason Luhan, the co-owner of the Native Art Department International and um, are represented by Galerie Hugues Charbonneau in um, Montreal. And a couple of introductory remarks just about Natalie Diaz, who is a writer and poet recipient of numerous fellowships and awards, among them a Lenin Literary Fellowship a Native Arts Culture Foundation Artist Fellowship, a Breadloaf Fellowship, the Holmes National Poetry Prize, a Hodder Fellowship, um, and many others, a U.S. Artist Ford Fellowship, and just this year also MacArthur Fellowship. Um, Natalie's poet, first poetry collection is entitled When My Brother Was an Aztec and was published by Copper Canyon Press in 2012. Other writings and essays have been published in the Narrative Magazine, Guernica, Poetry Magazine, The New Republic, Tin House, and The Prairie Schooner. Natalie was born and raised in Fort Mojave Indian Village in Needles, California, um, on the banks of the Calif uh, Colorado River, and um, Natalie's a Mojave enrolled member of the Gila River Indian Tribe, an associate professor in the Department of English at Arizona State University and splits her time between the East Coast and Mojave Valley in Arizona, um, where she works to revitalize the Mojave language. Um, with that, I think we're all ready for Maria and Natalie, so please join me in welcoming them to <laughs> this event. I'd like to thank ICP for giving me a space to have a studio. I'd like to thank, thank you, Susan. I'd like to thank Karen for making space for us here at the new school. Uh, gracias, but there are many familiar faces here. Um, 
Gracias, Maria, also for, for inviting me into this space with her. All right, so how do you want to do this? We'd like to share some of the ways that we've been thinking together recently, some of the, the questions that we've been having. Um, and there will be various modes of doing that. Um, we've been thinking between body and space and place, language, text, image. So we want to have a discussion. We want to have a conversation. So we're going to have a conversation and try out a few things that we want to work through, talk through, move through together. And then we're going to open things up for a broader conversation. Yeah. We have the room until 8.30. Uh, we may not go until that full time, but just to give you an idea. What's this? Is this sky? I am sky. I am sky. I am water. I am water. I am water. I am water. I am sky. I am sky. I am sky. I am sky. I am water. I am sky. I am water. I am sky. I am water. I am sky. I am sky. I am water. You are water. Am I water? You are water. You are sky. I am sky. If we are touching, what am I? Are we still touching? Akin Amai Kijik Amai Tahanam Beneshi Ikwe Kijik Ha. Beneshi. Ha havil. Ha havil. 
speech. Hamakav. Gigon. Man, Mahaya. Gigon. Man, Mahaya. Are you Sky? I am Sky. Ahai and Yech. If sky touches water, what is it? What's between? Is what's between also what's outside? Yes. Are we both inside? Yes. Am I also outside? Yes. Is there a middle? I am Sky. Am I touching you? I am Sky. Am I touching you? I fill the space between sky and water. I feel warm. Is that touch? Feel sky. I know that it is also water. Water is sky. I am water. Sky is water. If they meet, is there a border between them? Is there a border without us touching? Are we sky? What if, what if sky is down? What if water is up? When you were in Phoenix last week, you said, the sky is so low around here.
Was it the sky that was low? The sky was low. What was lower than the sky? Are we still touching? Is the sky lower in Phoenix? Do you feel like the sky is lower in Phoenix? Yeah, the sky comes all the way down to the ground in Phoenix. But beneath the ground, there's water. I didn't see any water. <laughs> Nestle's bottling it all up. <laughs> Outside of this building, we're surrounded by water. The sky is very high. it's possible to not see the sky. It's possible to not see the water. There are spaces between us. Are those spaces still a type of touching? Can you touch something you cannot see? Can you touch the water in Phoenix if you cannot see it? Once you touch water, water always has a memory of you. We are water. And we are touching. Water is life. Touching is life. Not touching is also life. There's life in here. There's life between us. And if our bodies aren't here in this space, there's life. 
Do you want to tell me about water? Do you want to tell me about sky? Water is part of my name. Hamakav. To say who I am is to say that the water is running through me. It's in my body. I'm carrying it everywhere. Do you want to tell me about water? Mm. No. Do you want to tell me about sky? No. Do you want to tell me about Sky? I don't, but I will. <laughs> in, in Mojave, we have a small bird that you call Swallow. And we call him Hamke. A Hamke. Every plant or animal that is tied to the water will begin with the word ha. So you always know where it comes from. I am ha makav, so I come from the water, the water is in me. Hamke was the leader, and he's the one who led all the animals back. And he led them on the wind. So he says, um, mataha, mataha katham. I called the wind, Mataha Katham, Ialtanak, and I led and everybody followed me. And Hamke, as you know, the swallow is the one that dips down into the water. And so Hamke is part water, he's also part wind, part sky. I don't have a sky story. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over to the desert. I think I'm at the desert. I'm very close to the desert. I've been to the desert. Is there a story about the sky in the desert? Do you have a story about sky that comes from the desert? Do you have a story about sky that comes from the desert that you want to share? No. No? No. What's your name? Can I ask you your name? Jason. Jason, you don't have a story about sky that comes from the desert? I do have a story about sky that comes from the desert. Are you from the desert? Yes. Which desert? We don't have a word for it. You don't have a name for the desert that you come from? Correct. You have a story, but you don't want to tell me the story. Is this right? Yes. Who is the story for? Us. Who is us? Nde. Am I Inde? No. If I'm not Inde, is your story about sky from the desert for me? No. I am not us? No. Thank you. Natalie, do you want another story? If you can find someone who will tell you one. I think I know just the person. I knew you would. 
I see somebody right here. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Can I ask you a question about the sky and or water? Yes. Can I ask you your name? My name's Sam. Hi, Sam. Hello. <laughs> I'm Maria. I'm Sam. <laughs> we know each other. Thank you for coming, Sam. Sam, where are you from? I'm from Round, <clears throat> Round Rock, Arizona. Where is that? On the Navajo Nation. You're from the Navajo Nation? Oh. <laughs> what is that? Yes. Yes? Did you say yes in Navajo? Is that what that word was? Oh. Uh, do you have a story that you can share? Sure. Right now? OK. With us? Uh, about the sky or the water? or Well, I like this ring here, because it has coral and turquoise in it. So it looks like, um, I think in there, in that book, this is like a, a rainbow. And it's you know turquoise and, and red. So it's like the communication between the sky and the earth. And I guess the, the water goes that way also. So you're telling me this ring, this piece of jewelry is, you're telling me that this turquoise and this coral, that coral is water? And turquoise is? Like the, the sky and the water. And but then the, the coral's also like blood, so it's like water. Everything's all mixed up. So like all, all together, it's a rainbow. I didn't know this was a rainbow. So all this time, this is sky and water. Did you know that? I didn't. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> but why did we think that they weren't always sky and water? Um. I think they're land. Is land sky and water? That ring says, what's that word? Which word? Yes. Oh. Oh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, they are. How do you feel? I feel like coming over here. <laughs> Is that OK? Are you OK? Yeah, I'm OK. I'm in a semi-corner, which feels good to me. I think there's a story right here. Is there a story right here, maybe? Does anything come to mind? No, unfortunately. You have no stories about sky or water? None at all. Where are you from? I'm from Helsinki. There's no stories about water from in Helsinki. Am I putting you on the spot? <laughs> no, uh, but nothing comes to mind. Nothing comes to mind? Nothing comes to mind. What's that? <laughs> What's your name? My name's Amanda. What did you say, Amanda? I, under my breath, I said, dude, you come from the land of water. Amanda says that is the land of water. What is your name? My name is Eero. Uh, it's about eyes. Uh, I once tried to make a hole into the eyes uh, with my friends. We were at the creek. And then 
the ice didn't break, so I jumped on it, and then I fell into the creek through the hole that I tried to make. I suppose that's it. That's a good one. <laughs> Thank you. A hole on the ice, and you jumped on it, and you fell through. In, in Helsinki, the land of water. <laughs> what time is it? Seven <laughs> sixteen. Do you want to ask him? That one? That one? That one. <laughs> he, knows, he knows who he is. He knows who he is. He's been here before. <laughs> Do you have a story about sky or water? The story I have is uh, from uh, Rex Lee Jim, Navajo poet, um, who gave me the okay to tell this story, okay? Um, which is not really a story, it's a poem. But I love this poem. Um, and I wish I knew the Navajo for it. But it is, uh, in Navajo it's only four words. So a four word poem is getting to the essence of it. But translated to English, um, it goes, um, one breath, earth, and sky together. And uh, it uh, is, he says, that is everything. Everything is in those four Navajo words, Every, one breath earth and sky together. The universe is there. So that's, that's a story. Gracias. Thank you. Miigwech. I know a Navajo. Is that true? <laughs> Should we say Dene? In Navajo you say Dene. Dene, Dene. Dene is the better. I know a Dene. Is that true? That story? It sounds familiar. It sounds like, um, uh, yeah, it reminds me of other stories I've heard. It reminds me of your ring. Are there any other, what's the word? Dene. Dene. Are there any other Dene in the room? Two Dene in the room. It's like a tribal council almost. <laughs> Do you want to ask the other one anything? <laughs> Do you want to? Do you have anything you want to add? Since you're in the room. Can I ask you your name? Megan. Oh, Megan. Is there something you want to share or add to? Uh, we talked about the breath. We talked about the earth. And what was the other thing? The sky. Uh, did we talk about the sun? T tell me about the sun. Tell me about the fire. Uh, the sun is our father. And he is warm. <laughs> and then uh, and the earth is uh, Nima. Nima. Nithyological sun. Uh, and that means Mother Earth. If the sun is your father, what is the moon? Oh, that's a good question. Our grandma? Sometimes. It's a, it, it changes. The moon. Sometimes it's female, sometimes it's 
grandma, sometimes it's grandpa, sometimes it's... Yeah. It's all, yeah. Have you heard that before about the moon? Yes. <laughs> Me too. No comments, geezons. You ready to switch it up? Sure. We're going to switch it up. We're going to try something new. We haven't done this before. This next thing is new. We haven't done any of it before. <laughs> <laughs> this is all very new. But it's nice to try to have a, a conversation in a way that's different than, than what we know conversation as. Um, Marie and I have had similar questions about place. I think place is a question that every indigenous person has. And one of the ways, one of my questions is, has to do with the fact that an indigenous body has had to become place because our land in many ways is, is a compromised land, is an occupied land. And so how do we think of place and space in the context of a body? Uh, one of the reasons why horizon has been a, a question for us is the idea that the earth meets the sky. And naturally, and you think of a meeting as two separate things, except what if those things have never been separate? Anybody in academia has heard of synergy? We talk a lot about synergy. If you want to get money for a grant, you talk about synergy. <laughs> However, what if instead we are thinking about a singular energy or an entanglement or a single body? And so one of the things that we've been talking about is how do you create space with the body if you take the idea of place away? not place itself, but all the things place has been. And how does language work in that new place of body? Uh, how does touch work? Right now, Marie and I just touched, and in a way, are we still touching? How do we think about a word like horizon, or a word like meeting, or a word like border? The idea that a border only exists because there are bodies that can cross it. There's touch that makes that border possible. Therefore, a border is impossible. So what I'm going to share with you is um, part of my conversation with these questions, and I'm bringing it in conversation with Maria's questions. Didn't they tell you that I was a savage? This is from Rihanna's song, Needed Me. Didn't they tell you that I was a savage? Fuck your white horse in a carriage. 
but you never could imagine? Another famous quote by Captain Richard Pratt, head of the US Training and Industrial School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. We must kill the savage to save the man. What happens when you make the indigenous body unpinnable? What happens when you take away place? place that signifies to you indigeneity or the erasure and visibility of indigeneity? <laughs> From Peter Pan, when they come across the engines. What makes the red man red? When did he first say, ugh? Why does he ask you how? If the indigenous body becomes a place, like the horizon, for example, it becomes a happening. What does it mean that the indigenous body is a happening? Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. Do you dance, Mr. Darcy? Every savage can dance. All of the beadwork in the photographs are patterns and colors for water and for sky. From Pocahontas, they're savages, savages, they're barely even human. This has been attributed to several different colonels in the United States military. <laughs> Every buffalo dead is an Indian gone. 7.30, it is 
from your United States Declaration of Independence. He has excited domestic insurrections amongst and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages. This was reprinted in several newspapers. The state reward for dead Indians has increased to $200 for every red skin sent to purgatory. For this next part, we want to try sky and water. Yeah, is it time? Yes. How do you want to do this? You're going to be the ones doing it. <laughs> By you, she meant you. <laughs> Should we pair up? So um, turn to the person sitting next to you. <laughs> like so. <laughs> and this side, I have a microphone, but you don't have a microphone. And think about if you're water or if you're sky. Or if you are both or neither. <laughs> and what that might mean. And are you touching or not touching? <laughs> what does touch feel like? Is there synergy? <laughs> Are you using one or two hands? Just hold that for a second. If you're by yourself, you can touch your own hand. Take that in. Think about what the space between your hands or around your hands feels like. Meaning, what do your hands feel like?
We can hear people talking. It sounds very good in here. Sky and water is touching. Hey there. Can you um, share with me a little bit about that for you, how that was? How did that go? I see you switch partners. <laughs> the sky and water were not compatible, or they were both skies? <laughs> were, you, were you sky, may I ask? Are you, are you comfortable with this question? You were neither. You were neither sky nor water. Natalie, did you, were you curious about a feeling or how it felt? Yeah, I think, it, I think an interesting question or a compelling question would, would be um, how did you experience it bodily or physically or emotionally? Do you, is there something, one of those three that you, you're, you'd feel comfortable sharing with the room? You want to share physically? Can you tell us? Buzzing, buzzing. Buzzing? Hi. What about you? Well, uh, I thought I was going to be sky, but I uh, kind of felt like water. <laughs> you, you felt like water? Yeah. No, for real, uh, I thought like, maybe because Jonas has like very uh, heating hands. It was like very, very warm there. I kind of felt like washed away, like water. When you switch partners, were you still water? Were you still water when you switch partners? Or? Uh, we just had like a very quick moment together. <laughs> well, <laughs> we will come back to you. <laughs> Do you want a moment? I wonder also if there were other places in your body you you felt something, um, you know, hands, of course, but were there other places that you felt what was happening? Like the brain? Is that what you're thinking, Natalie? Where are you taking me? Here? I think less the brain. Um, so less maybe what you understood and more what you experienced. So if, if you can imagine being in an unknown and just coming back to the body. Like the heart? Maybe the heart? <laughs> Does someone want to share? The liver, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come over here and ask this person. <laughs> this looks like someone who knows how... I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I've seen you perform with sound and gloves and that things with the gloves make sound. So you know about touch. Is there something you want to share about the experience? I heard sound today without the gloves. Are you talking about what the... Touching. The exercise of touching without touching. And you heard sound? Yeah. You felt it, maybe? You felt so. I felt vibrations. You felt vibrations. Oh. Cool. Do you want to say something? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> I felt um, very calm, and I felt like, um, like a, a heat, like it was a third thing. Did everyone hear that? No. You felt heat, like it was a third thing. Did I get that right? Do we want one more? 
up here. Thank you for volunteering. Um, during um, when we were doing sky and water, I felt um, besides the heat, I felt very safe because um, I just had a weird feeling that I was safe and like comfortable and like I was like feeling at home. But it just like I felt um, just really at home, safe. That's what I felt during this experience. Thank you for sharing. Did anyone have a different feeling? Kristen? I felt a little scared. What's that? <laughs> I felt a little scared. You felt a little scared? I find that hard to believe. Was it too close? Were you two partners? Yeah. I know both of you. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for, for trying that exercise with us. So now we're at the point in the night where we would like to open things up a little bit more. And we're going to share with you, there's three people in the room who have been working with us. So we just want to introduce them to you. So we have three different people who have we asked to help us and um, take notes. So Nicole Wallace, where's Nicole? So Nicole Wallace has been taking notes on what Natalie has been saying. Nicole, do you want to? Is there anything you want to share that stands out that you want to share with us about those notes that you've been taking? But before you do that, as you come over here, make your way to the mic. Natalie, was there anything you wanted to say about this process before we, how we came to it? Or anything else about archive and documentation? Yeah, I, I think something, again, like touch has been a big part of this and so to consider to consider language and communication as a physicality as a type of touch and what happens if we can move the the focal point out one more so what we thought of as a boundary which was what was happening here we've now stepped outside of it so that all of us were on the inside in a way um, I don't know if that's actually possible, but that was a thought of why we might pull the boundary back a little bit. Yeah, and we had a lot of conversation about documentation, how we want to document uh, and feeling that perhaps having visual documentation through video wouldn't necessarily get everything that we're after. So we've also asked these three people to be sort of I guess we call them living archivists. Archivists is up for grabs. We're, yeah. we're not sure about that Living non-archivists. But how also do you document a question? Yeah. So, all right, Nicole, can you share? You don't have to read all your notes, but just if there's something you want to share. OK, so I recorded what Natalie was saying. So these are some of the things that stuck out to me. And can everyone hear all right? Is this loud enough? Okay, so here are things that I heard Natalie say that stuck out to me. If we are touching, what am I? Are we still touching? What if the indigenous body becomes a place, like the horizon, like a happening? Thank you, Nicole. Um, now I'm gonna ask Ivy, Casta, come over here. Castellano, I got you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so Ivy was um, documenting my movements, and Ivy's a performance artist, Nicole's a poet. So can you, is there something that you wanted to share? Um, yeah, can you, can you show us? And there's pictures, but Ivy's going to show us. 
Yes, you can pick them up. Twelve and six. And purgatory came from and purgatory was said from the quote that um, is in the Declaration of Independence. So I just thought that really powerful. Thank you for being my eyes. Thank you. Thank you. And your body. And my body. They were your body also. Is that like a surrogate? A double? <laughs> and then we have um, the third person. Yeah, Abu Farman has an apparatus. We wanted an anthropologist. I, yeah, imagine receiving a text from Natalie saying, we want an anthropologist to record what we're doing. It's like a recipe for trouble. The only time I've ever asked for an anthropologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so at first I said, why don't you try these are the people I gave her a list. <laughs> but I'm here. Yeah, I, I, I've been also doing, and Natalie knows this is uh, sort of recently, lecture performances, and people ask for recordings and, or, or the paper beforehand because it's an academic setting or, or afterwards. And I feel like you can't give that stuff to people because it kills it. It, it like, you know, makes everything dead in the mouth and you can't use it again once it's in like, print handed over. So what I did, first of all, was, yeah, can I, can I not use a mic? So first, and, and so what I've done before also has been sometimes when people insist on getting some of that stuff, I erase it and send it, send it to them. So I tried doing that with you guys. Uh, so I, I was writing part of what I was thinking about. They were saying and erasing with my left hand as I was writing. So that's kind of the result. And it, it you know, it becomes a palimpsest. And I don't know, it's, it, it was just something I tried. And then I tried it with colors. And then it bled through and it became this. So these are the traces I'll give to you. And at some point, you know, one of the things I also keep saying, sorry for taking so much time, but that with performance, the, which is what you guys are doing, the effect of language is not, or the effect of all of it is not on the mind, it's on, a lot of it is on the body, so the language should charge the space that's empty between us. And so I wanted, I just was thinking about how it, how it affects the body. So I was using this little thing that is you know, sold to uh, consumers, mothers, to hear their children breathe and feel really good about the future. Um, <laughs> so I was using that to sort of record my heart rate as they were talking. Some of you may have heard a little bit of my heart as they were doing that. Um, can we, can we hear some of that right now? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to hear your heart. <laughs> it goes fast, my heart. Oh, you know it. See how it has an effect on the body? <laughs> Those are our helpers, thank you. All right, I think that's it. Is that it, Natalie? That's it. All right, that's it, we're done. <laughs>